Al Sharpton made a big hit in Harlem last night. He hit the floor during a taping of Channel 9's Morton Downey show at the Apollo Theater. Robert Miller reports the Reverend's fall came when Corps leader Roy Innes decided to get physical during some verbal sparring. Even after the shenanigans with him and the other That's soldiers. a lot of crap. No, no, brother, you have crap. your time. That's a lot of crap. Brother, and I got brother, brother, I got brother, I got I got brother, 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 It took about 25 minutes to bring peace among supporters of each man. The taping then continued, and when it was over, I talked with both. It was a clear signal that all of you that have been projecting me as the violent, emotional Al Sharpton and Roy Innes as the conservative law and order Roy Innes have had your whole images smashed tonight. It seems like I am a reasonable, uh, committed activist who was assaulted by a very vile, violent, uncontrollable man. This is a declaration to all rabble. This is one black leader that's not afraid of them, would not back wait down minute, from them. Wait a minute. If you had it to do over, would you push the Reverend Sharpton? If it developed the way it did, and I, I think I was a big boy, you know, I was a man. I've always been one of our big supporters. You all know that. And that's why me and Al, as men, can decide we're going to solve our things separately later on in an honorable way to black men. At one point, Innes told me that Don King is promoting an Innes Sharpton boxing bout for September. That's something I'd pay to see. Outside the Apollo Theater, Robert Miller for the News at Noon. Physical clash between Roy Innes and Reverend Al Sharpton at the Apollo Theater. Well, in a moment, you're going to see it. But first, let me explain events that led up to the fight. On last night's show at the Apollo, which I hope you watched, Sharpton criticized Roy Innes. So I invited Sharpton to come and face Roy Innes. Watch this, please. I have the courage to denounce a black bigot. I think Roy Innes is no good, and I denounce him. Now, if you don't mind, let's go back a step. One of the things that provoked the confrontation that you, you've heard about and seen is the claim by Innes that he defended Reverend Al Sharpton over the Tawana Brawley affair on our show a couple of months ago. Watch this also. Surprisingly enough, I work fairly well with Sharpton and most things. It's Madison Mason that I have well-known conflict with. And if I can get her away from Madison Mason, even with Sharpton involved, I will bring in the NAACP, I will bring in the Urban League, I will bring in any legitimate black organization to work with us and help her get justice. Okay? Two black leaders in a physical and verbal struggle for leadership in the black community. Is this going to be something that's ongoing? Is this going to be something that uh, you're not going to get to see the whole story on? No. You're going to see it exactly as it happened. become of the dream, the dream of Martin Luther King spoke so many years ago about, has the dream of the 1960s become the nightmare of the 80s, or has the dream simply been deferred, awaiting new leadership and inspiration? Tonight, we have some of the black leaders of today, Roy Innes, of course, to the Reverend Al Sharpton. Some people, some people call Al the talking microwave because I'll tell you,
He can heat up anything in a hurry. Who speaks for black America? Roy Innes? Al Sharpton? Who speaks? You'll be the judge. Join us tonight. One of the problems, one of the problems in our country that we really don't address is the white people trying to tell black people who their leadership should be. One of those problems is addressed because the white people, we haven't been able to pick too many good leaders. Well, who does pick the leadership? And what is leadership? It was Martin Luther King. Certainly it's a Jesse Jackson. He got seven million votes. Tonight, I want to introduce you. I want to introduce you to two. One very good friend of mine, Roy Innes, and another gentleman. And the interesting dichotomy of it all, another good friend, Al Sharpton. I mean. Going out drinking together, but he uses it on his hair. You're not smiling tonight. No sense of humor tonight. Gentlemen, uh, let me go first to Al. On last night's show, you had the audacity to praise Louis Farrakhan and call Roy Innes a bigot. Reverend, would you explain to Roy Innes why he's a bigot? Well, I will not explain to Roy why he's a bigot. I'll explain to your audience. I was a person that had respect for Mr. Ennis. Uh, Mr. Ennis, in the late 60s, uh, was a nationalist leader in this community. And many of the things that I praise Farrakhan for now, in terms of self-help programs, and in terms of having integrity Mr. Ennis represented, but in this transitional stage, uh, Mr. Ennis went from a man who would challenge a Bob Abrams to a man who would curtail and kowtow and back down to a Bob Abrams. Just two years ago, Mr. Ennis and I were friends when a lot of ex-Corps members were making allegations. But when one uh, bum, who he knew was a bum, tried to, to, to turn on us, Roy, in his assignment, embraced them. Because anything that goes against our community, whether it's Bork, whether it's Bernard Get, whether it's Tawana Brawley, Roy Ennis takes the other side. I feel that if Mr. Abrams, who has an active investigation on Roy, who Roy has said to me is using a Jewish plot against him, if Mr. Abrams and I arrest, can make you get on your knees, Roy, fine. That's your problem. You should shut up and let those of us that have enough guts to stand up and fight, stand up and fight. Because there's some of us that investigations and indictments and the rest don't mean anything to. How you can go from a critic of Bob Abrams to an apologist of Bob Abrams makes you suspect at best and a sellout in fact. How does it feel to be classified as a bigot after a lifetime of fighting for civil rights? I will... <laughs> I will say that I'm probably one of the... Now, please zip it. We're going to let everyone talk tonight. And that's what the loudmouths are for. Let these guys talk first. Go ahead. I'm one of the few non-bigoted black leaders run, I will say. Let me say it now. Let's deal with the facts. Let's go to the record. Tonight, we want to deal with the records and the facts. Please do it. On this program, your program, you heard me, you have me on tape. 
defending this man. Recently, even after the shenanigans with him and the other That's soldiers. a lot of crap. Now, look, brother, That's you have your time. That's a lot of crap. Brother, and I got brother, it. Lord, I got go it. hold on. I got it. Go hold on. I got it. Continue with the show. We're going to continue with the show. We're going to be cool. Yeah. We're going to go to a break. We'll be right back. We'll be right back. Camera. We'll be right back after these lessons. Cool. saying welcome back to the wide world of sports but instead instead let me tell you a new format a new format for this discussion this discussion will be conducted by these two gentlemen each one having five minutes of his time and then we'll go to the audience for questions for each of these gentlemen I would ask I would ask that Reverend Sharpton be able to call the coin for who goes first. Look, well, first, let me say this. We are continuing with Ennis and I have agreed. Please, 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 listen. That uh, we're not going, I'm not going to, in Harlem, have anybody it, go man, through a thing it. with bringing in the police from the outside. So we've agreed to have a benefit match. A benefit in boxing September, match. In September, in which whoever wins that organization gets the money. So Roy, get ready for a righteous butt whipping for me. Uh, would, would the Reverend Sharpton call the coin? Would the Reverend Sharpton Head. call the coin Head. for the opening? Heads is called. And it is heads. Reverend Sharpton okay. will say what he has to say no, in the next no, five no. minutes. On I have you said mine. Let him respond. He's designating that Roy Innes has the floor. Without me, gentlemen, you don't need me. I think the resolution, this temporary resolution of this little mini crisis indicates why I have been one of the loud, vocal supporters of Al Sharpton. And as I stated, as I stated, that is well documented, if nothing else, on this show. If anything, I can remind you, Mark, of you being very critical of me for that strong defense. I was very critical of Maddox and Mason, and I think that they are both an abomination and civil rights. chance you will have a chance to go to the loud marks i promise you i took a lot of flack i took a lot of baggage for our shopping i've always said he's one of the brightest young leaders we have in the country i still believe that i believe that he is wrong to be hooked up with those two guys they're not civil rights al has been civil rights to the to the indecent ones, you get your time at the mic. I kick your butt there too. Yeah. Yeah. The problem. Refer to the. I'll refer to some strange alleged support of my part 
for Robert Abrams. If there's been one critic of Robert Abrams and his cowardly reverse racist tactics, in this case and other cases, it's been me. If it's been anybody, I'm speaking to the decent people of America and those here. That Cuomo, I believe that Cuomo and Abrams are both playing a very cynical, racist game. All right? I am, I am talking to the decent people in here. To hell with the others. I accuse Robert Abrams of racism, cowardice, for so let me summarize. Al is no way that I'm a supporter of Abrams. Abrams is a tool of the political system. He's a tool of our common enemy, enemy Major Owen. He is conducting an investigation of both of us based on Owen. I'm not crazy. But let me let me say. Let me point out decency. That's the name. Decency. Not stupidity. All right. Now, Lord, what you're seeing here is what's really wrong with black leadership. The fact that they have lied to these people. The fact that they have choked these people. The fact that they have made fools of these people. Not all of them, of course. All right? They, they, can, they can't stay quiet long enough to hear their own ignorance. Or not, I'm gonna proceed here tonight to enlighten them. Even though the press has kept them from hearing the truth, they're gonna hear the damn truth here tonight, whether they like it or not. All right. The next, the next five minutes belongs to the Reverend Al Sharpton. Let me say, uh, in response to that, I think that, uh, Roy, you're right, I have been involved in civil rights and human rights for a long time, and I have not met two more credible and committed and dedicated men than Vernon Mason and Austin Matthews. I think a testimony to that is, I remember when Morgenthau was trying to prosecute you, and wrongfully so, that even you had went to Vernon Mason to represent you at that time. So I think that the, to, to try and, and, and act like Vernon and Austin of no, is of no merit, I don't think is credible. There are people that play games. I don't like shopping. I like the lawyers. Now people saying I like shopping. I don't like the lawyers. We are three people that are together all the way and we will not be separated because we believe in what we're doing. The fact of the matter is, through the Bumpers case, through the Stewart case, through the other cases, we could not find a legal strategy that would challenge the justice system in this state that, that, that is perpetrating the games that you referred to until Maddox and Mason developed the legal strategy of challenging these grand jury cover-ups. And you cannot divorce the, the, the egg from the chicken. The egg is Maddox Mason and Sharpton. You can't have one without the other two. <laughs> I'll give them two minutes. All right. <clears throat> reverend Sharpton is yielding two minutes on that. I would like to ask Reverend Sharpton, as a reverend, do you swear that everything you have said about the Tawana Brawley case is true in your mind? There's your Bible. 
which is what ministers do. If you read the Bible, you know we don't swear. But I affirm that everything that I have represented on the Tawana Brawley case is absolutely true. That's, that's good enough for me. Is it good enough for you? No, it is not. That's good enough for I me. Have, it's not good enough I for you. I have done an extensive investigation. And I do feel certain that Nothing that has been alleged by Maddox, Mason, and Chop, and say I can't separate them, therefore now Chopton. Anything alleged by them in reference to this case is an absolute and unmitigated lie. We'll be back in just a minute to continue with these two gentlemen and with our audience. Stand by. In this segment of our program, Reverend Al Sharpton has three minutes. Ms. Roy Innes has three minutes. I would like to ask, is there one black neutral man or woman in the audience who doesn't have his mind made up on this? May I see one hand? You are, sir, would you come up on stage? Would you come up on stage? If you, if you believe that, I want to send you a bridge. <laughs> come on. Come on. You want me to reference? I'm going to ask this man to stand up here as the host of this show. Black people in America for too long have had white people telling them what's right and wrong. That sucks. Make up your own mind. You're the host. Reverend Al Sharpton has the first three minutes. In, in response to uh, Mr. Ennis saying that the information that we have given on Tawana Brown is a lie, my information is based, A, on talking with Tawana Brawley, which Mr. Ennis nor his investigator has done, in getting the hospital records that only the family had until the city son published them now about six weeks ago. And the fact of the matter is that if we could get a new prosecutor and Mr. Abrams was put aside, we could put Tawana Brawley and all of this evidence in front of a grand jury rather than in front of a man that has been put there for political reasons to protect people in power. The results of Mr. Ennis's investigation, I believe, uh, that I've heard announced, and he can correct me if I'm wrong, is his investigator, Mr. Kelly, I believe is his name, said that Ms. Brawley was partying with a cop. I challenge Mr. Ennis tonight, if that is your finding, to give that cop's name, he should be arrested for statutory rape. Even your investigation shows a crime. We have named the people that our investigation comes up with. I've never heard court name who this cop is that Tawana was supposed to be partying with. Mr. Ennis, would you like to respond to that? Yes. I want... Please, please, let's have a little quiet, please. They obviously don't want to hear the truth. Do let's, you want to hear the truth? Let's, let's give Mr. Ennis a chance to respond, please. Please vote. Glad to see you. Right. You might learn something if you shut up. Yeah. Now, we went about trying to investigate and evaluate 
the allegations not made by Tawana, mind you, but by Maddox, Mason, and Sharpton. Now, a little logic here. Tawana Brawley has an uncle. His name is Matthew Strong. He happens to be a cop. He happens to be her legal guardian. It happens that she grew up in his house. It happens that she lived in his house during this crisis. If, in fact, she's so afraid of white racist authority, then why doesn't she talk to black, non-racist uncle, Matthew Strong? Uh, she has been... She has been... Let, let, she, let Mr. She let has Mr. been before Cameron. To answer, please. She has been in churches. She has been in all kinds of places where she can tell the truth. What is she waiting for? Could it be that unicorns don't exist? Okay. okay. So Mr. Mm -hmm. Ennis has responded. Let's hear from. Let's hear from. Okay, please, 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 please. Okay, Ms. Ennis, the audience has requested that you name the police officer involved in this. I have not named or alleged to know the name of any police officer. It was a speculation made by Mr. Kelly that maybe she could have been partying with a cop. I have not ascertained that, and I have not proclaimed that at any time. I do pro proclaim that Maddox, Mason, and Sharpton are dead wrong. Those are bogus allegations, and so is the city side. Right, so then, yes. so, so the findings of your... Mr. Sharpton is now responding, So the finding please. of your investigation is not that you have found out what happened, you just found out what didn't happen. Exactly. Which means, exactly. Which means, which means that your assignment was to try to disprove us rather than to establish a case. You don't have any idea of what happened to Tawana Brown. Okay, okay, hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. We go to... Hold on. Let's, let's get a question from Big Mouth. I'll tell you what we'll do. I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll be back and let the audience speak next. Stand by. segment of our program, I want our audience to ask any questions they want of either one of these gentlemen or myself. Sir, you're first. So please like state you. your name. My name is Stanley Klaus. I'm a writer. Uh, I wanted to, I wanted to ask of Mr. Sharpton, I want to ask of Mr. Sharpton two questions. Cool it and sit down, please. Go ahead, sir. One is that on a, around February 12th, Bill Cosby and Ed Lewis offered a reward of... Please go ahead, Mr. Krauss. These gentlemen simply have to go to the bathroom. Offered a reward of $25,000 for any information leading to the arrest and prosecution of any of the people involved in the alleged assault on Tawana Broadway. It is almost, it is six months later now. Now, no one has come forward, to my knowledge, perhaps to yours. We know that when $10,000 was offered when that cop was killed in Queens, that within a week, two guys were arrested for that murder. Now, it seems very strange to me, and I would like you to answer that, the first question. Why do you think no one has come forward to uh, ask for that $25,000 that was offered by Cosby and Ed Lewis? Number one, number one. Number two, 
How is it, I mean, I, I've, I've heard you often refer to anyone who disagrees with your tactics or those of either of the lawyers as being a renter, Tom, but I would like to know how you, how you could account for the fact that Ilambe Bray, Roger Green, G2 Wilsey, Sonny Carson, and uh, Playtel Benjamin, and a number of other people, including Hazel Duke, and all have been, have... Let's hear the gentleman. What I'm saying is this, is that you all have been criticized by every, with every, with every kind, every kind We've of... We've asked the question, sir. Yeah, that's what I'm asking you. What, how is... That's what I'm saying. How, how do you account for the fact that you all have been roundly criticized by every, every black persuasion of leadership in New York? All right, the answer to your first question... The answer to your first question is... Please, uh, please let's hear the Reverend's knowledge, answer. No one has come forward to claim a reward, which is very strange when you've had a bunch of people on television claiming to know what happened, claiming that they could prove that we were not telling the truth, that none of them that claimed the party with uh, Tawana and Newberg did not go to get the money. They went to Mike Taibbi and got on television rather than go get $25,000. So it is very strange to me that no one went for the money, maybe because they couldn't prove what they were saying. As far as your statement that uh, many persuasions of the black community have roundly criticized us, that is not true. We have been solidly supported by Reverend William Jones, Reverend Timothy Mitchell, and the ministers. We've been solidly supported by Minister Louis Farrakhan. We've been solidly supported by several leaders that are still in this honor. So for you to name, for you to name people that are in a particular group and say that's a rounded group of the black community is absolutely. Oh, wait, sir, if you're gonna ask a question, I'm gonna answer. You also name someone that that is a writer at the Village Voice, like you are that is not a leader at all. So, so, so I have not called everyone that disagree with us a renaissance. I've called renaissance, renaissance. There are some people that disagree with us that disagree for strategic reasons. There are others that have been assigned to disagree with us. And if you, uh, if we had the time here or right after here, I can go down the list and tell you who I think was rented and who I think has a strategic problem. But they're solid support in the community for us. All right, sir. Please, please introduce yourself. Please introduce yourself. Okay, my name is Paul Merrill. I work for the New York City Department of Transportation. I have two questions for Mr. Roy Ennis, okay? And I appreciate if you can listen to other questions very, very clearly, okay? My first question is, when us poor folks, Hispanics and blacks, go into court and we try to tell a story to the best way that we can, the first thing they tell us is stick to the story, stick to the story, stick to the story. That's irrelevant. That's irrelevant. What I want to know on my second question is, if that's what we're trying to do is stick to the story, then why is the judicial system themselves who can't praise what they preach trying to discredit this man by going into his background and pointing out that has nothing to do with the Warner Brawley and making them look like crap to confuse us? That's what I want to know. Why are they doing it? what I feel, all right? Here's what I feel. No matter if Tawana got raped or not, okay, it's very important that she didn't. No matter how true it is, it's very important that didn't. Because if Reverend Sharpton ever comes out with the truth, I don't think there'll be a black and Hispanic in this world that's gonna let a cop put a handcuff on him again. is we have been concerned in our investigation not with Sharpton and his problem, not with political gain, the same people trying to investigate Sharpton to investigate me. So that's not the issue. The issue is Tawana Brawley. I have dealt exclusively with Tawana Brawley. It was alleged that she was found by the side of the road in a bag. Lie. It was alleged that she was made all over with feces. Lie. 
He has finishes and turns his spot. All right. Oh, oh, man. Man. You want to you hear the man? man. He was right. Live. FBI report said no race. All right. It's alleged that she's afraid to talk to white racist authorities. Her uncle is a black cop. She's been before the media. She's been in churches. She's at all kinds of podiums. I'm not talking about her uncle. I think the judicial system needs a tune up. Let me say, let me say this in response. According to the ambulance Lance report that picked up Tawana Brawley, the fact of the matter is she was discovered by them in a bag, unconscious, could not respond to only the most painful stimuli. 80% of her body was covered with excrement, 30% with burns, according to the ambulance report. Now, if you're saying that these are lies based on what documented fact, can you say they are lies? They're lies because... They are lies because she was seen getting in a bag behind the house in your That's not living. a document. Huh? That's not a document. Yeah. Witnesses for that. There's a witness that th there is one woman who can't prove what she said. There is there is one woman that can't prove what she said. There is no official record that describes the ambulance record. No, it doesn't exist. If the ambulance that record exists, that is a village. That is the city son's interpretation of no, no, no. the ambulance record. Yeah. We no. have the ambulance record. Nah. We'll come back to this gentleman and this gentleman after these commercials. Stand by. <laughs> Let me come back to this gentleman. You have a question? Give me your name. I hereby ask the Reverend Al Sharpton to come clean. Ask the question, man. Don't give me the come clean crap. Ask. Reverend Al, when you embrace this Tawana Brawley issue in your undying quest for publicity, you didn't check out the facts. Now, don't you feel like a cartoon character who takes a big leap off the board finds out there's no water in the pool. And if not, and if not, why have we asked a question, asked a question on a specific thing without giving me a bunch of bull****? All right. And if not, Al, how come we have no more information about this case than we had several months ago? First of all, First of all, let me say this. Amateur night at the Apollo, amateur night at the Apollo is Wednesday. And you can come and try to be a comedian tomorrow night. You know this gentleman? Sir, would you give your name, please? First of all, my name is Mustafa Majid. Uh, I'd like to say to the, to the audience, to the friends, we like to welcome you to Harlem, you say, and show your nice hospitality. That's right. But sometimes you find in every race, you have a bad seed. You have bad seeds in the Japanese, Chinese, Italian, like Al Capone, bad seed. And then in the black race, which is no different. Wait a second, wait a in second. In the black race, wait there's a no different. No bad seeds say. in the Irish. <laughs> and, the, and the Irish. Okay? In our race, we have a bad seed. Our bad seed is Roy Ennis. You know, Roy, you know, let me finish, let me finish. You know, you know, Roy, you know, Roy, I've been on, I've been on the radio with you and a couple other places, you know, and, and I see, Roy, that either you've been raped from your brain, 
and somebody else have must be put another brain in you, brother, because why would you disrespect Harlem? Why would you disrespect yourself? Why would you disrespect the black woman in Apollo Theater, you know saying, knowing that the Apollo Theater is owned and run by black? Why would you do that? Why would you put your brother over? Why would you commit a, a vow and and and, and, and degradation of it? Why would you do that, brother? Let me go to this gentleman for 20 seconds. You got it, pal. Okay. Yes, I want to address my remarks to you, Mr. Roy Ennis. I want an apology from you in front of Harlem for assaulting Brother Al Sharpton, who happens to be a reverend. I want an apology from you. What you did behind the stage don't mean we had, we witnessed what took place, and we're not having it. Right? Let me tell you. Right. Me and Al Sharpton go a long way back, okay? Me and Al Sharpton, Al Sharpton doesn't need you to pick up his fight. We will settle our differences, all right? But if you have a separate problem, if you have a separate problem, pick up your problem. Another thing, I want you to stop inviting more conflict between the audience and you. 30 seconds, close your time. I want to say, in closing, it was important for us as we deal with the Tawana Brawley case and the issue of leadership, we have been criticized, we have been ostracized, 